kind of the usual make sure cell phones are silenced. Um, I, we don't have any outside people talking tonight. So let's go to roll call. All right, Bartelt. Here. Davis. Here. Dirth. Here. Huda, uh, Groyal is excused. Hudak. Here. Martin is excused. Metz. Here. Millette. Here. Palmieri is excused. And then Schellinger. Here. Nobody's Hi. on mute. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then moving on to the minutes, the February 14th. Are there any comments, questions, concerns, changes? Do we have a motion to approve? Motion, I'll motion. to approve. Second. Which one called first? And 21. Which one? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor of approving the March 14th, 2022 minutes? February 14th. February, February 14th, I'm sorry, February 14th, 2022 minutes. Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, thank you. All right, any public comment? Nope. Any old business? Nope. All right, let's move on to new business. Ray, would you like to introduce and kick off the uh, Menominee Park Shoreland? Sure. This first item is to um, consider a three-year extension of the Menominee Park Shoreland Restoration Project and Maintenance Agreement. Um, and with us tonight is Michelle Bogdan Meitzel. Metzel. Metzel. And uh, Michelle is the chair of the Friends of Menominee Park Shoreland. Um, this project has been ongoing for a number of years. And um, what Michelle uh, and her group do, they put together a work plan for us to consider, which is included in your packet. Uh, staff has reviewed it, is comfortable um, saying, Let's go ahead and, and have the, um, the maintenance plan approved. And then um, what we'd be doing is extending their agreement with us for another three years. So Michelle has a great presentation. She wants to show you what they've been up to and what their plans are for the upcoming year. And if you got questions, she can answer them as well. Thank you, Ray, I appreciate it. All right, so um, this actually is a picture, one of my favorites of the site because we have an endangered species there. Um, it's red cardinal flower, um, something of that. So pretty, we don't have a lot of red there, but in any case, um, as Ray introduced me, my name is Michelle Bogdemetzel, my pronouns are she, her, and hers. Uh, and I've been the chair of the Friends of Menominee Park Shoreland for um, quite some time since I think October 2015 it was, so it's been it's been a little while. Um, other active members of the group that have been helping with the leadership um, is Justin Mitchell. Um, and he was the person that um, was first chair of the organization and kind of brought everything together. Um, Janet Wissink, who is the Winnebago Audubon Society president, um, the chair of BirdFest. Uh, Zyga Freevalds, um, who is also very active in different um, nature areas and plantings. And then Margie Davey, who is the um, chair of the Sustainability Advisory Board, of which I'm also vice chair. So that's just a picture of some of the crew um, that was there at one of our work days. All right, so just a quick rundown. I won't go through um, the whole presentation in, in minute detail, but um, why are we here? Why do we have native plants in um, Miller's Bay, where we have them along the shore of Lake Winnebago. Um, you can see turf grass here. It doesn't have very much um, for a root system, but native plants, um, such as the ones featured here, um, have a long root system. They're typically about um, three times the size of their above ground growth. Um, and this helps in a variety of ways, um, filtering out nutrients that would otherwise wash into our water, which contributes to cyanobacteria, which I'll get to. Um, it also filters out um, garbage that would otherwise go in there that we clean up, creates a visual barrier for Canada geese. Um, they love to loaf where they have a clear view of the water. So those native plants um, stop them from seeing that so they think maybe a predator is hiding in them. They don't want to be there. So our, our little path by the water is one of the clearest you'll find um, <laughs> in terms of uh, evidence of geese. Um, and uh, it also provides seeds and uh, nesting habitat for birds and um, obviously benefits pollinators and things like that. Um, just as I mentioned, uh, this is uh, cyanobacteria, also known as blue-green algae. This is a real picture of um, 
the um, Miller's Bay area there um, with some of that. Um, initially, this all got started um, with the 2010 uh, City of Oshkosh Miller's Bay Aquatic Management Plan, um, also known as the 2009 Ontario Study, um, or it referenced the Ontario Study, excuse me. Uh, which said that uh, the shoreline's incredibly poor and provides no aesthetic habitat or buffling value to the bay. Um, and just basically said why we should have things like um, native plants and things to help with this. So um, there was a lot of community support. Um, as you can see from our leadership, we have a lot of involvement from area nonprofits. Um, we had our first installation planted along Miller's Bay by Ames Point in 2000, fall 2011. Um, so our first full season was in 2012. So this is our 10th year, which we're really excited about, our first full, uh, 10th full season. And uh, the group actually received, uh, uh, the city received a collaboration award for this because it's um, far reaching with different native or sorry, nonprofit groups. Um, so you can see, um, this is actually the same season of um, our viewing area. We had put this in in 2017 to give an area for people who wanted to sit among the plants, um, have a lower view of the plants so that they could see the lake and kind of enjoy the site. Um, and depending on the um, time of the season you're in, you might see um, some flowering plants or you might see them in a different color there. Um, we have a large area here. You can see that's largely wood chips and that's something that we want to um, do something more with because right now the spot in front of the bench looks pretty ugly and the spot behind the bench looks nice. <laughs> so, and that's the area that we've really planted and been maintaining for that viewing area. And a lot of the plants here don't provide much value. So we would really like to do something better with that. Um, we were featured in the Oshkosh Garden Walk in 2017. Um, and we did have that bench installed in that same year by the um, Oshkosh Garden Club. They donated the bench. So um, it is with their help that we have this viewing area. Um, so throughout the season, we have what are called, or what I've been calling, adopt a cleanup. Um, and those happen um, during different Saturdays in um, the whole season. Usually we have one to two Saturdays a month, um, but in the more active seasons, the larger growing seasons, we have two. Plus during the week, we have other um, cleanups weekly. Um, but those are just kind of quick ones that we can do cleaning up trash and other things. Um, but yeah, we have all sorts of different groups that help us from, um, this is Target who's really helped us um, with our trail maintenance um, in the beginning of the season and laying down cardboard and wood chips so that we don't have as much weed growth. Um, we've also worked with um, different groups. Um, UW Oshkosh has been great. We've worked with different elementary students. They actually planted this area right here, um, which is great. This is actually just behind that bench. So that was really cool to see. Um, and then the elementary students and um, college students then come together actually for one um, event where they collect seeds, which is really cool. Um, and then the elementary students come before them and then they teach them about the plants. They teach the college students. So they think that's pretty cool. Um, so, this, these are some of the various letters of support that we've received over the years. Um, it's just been amazing how much um, support you re we've received, both um, verbally, through letters, through, you know, people just walking by. Um, there, of course, is a transition time where we have had people complain about the height of the plants um, or don't like the look of some of the ones that we have in there. Um, so that's something that we've been dealing with as well, but um, change is hard. And for the most part, um, since 2017, actually, I've been seeing or hearing <coughs> less and less complaints. Um, and even people walking by, because initially, you know, people would be like, oh, how can you tell the difference between the weeds and the mm -hmm. plants, you know? But as time wore on, people are really happy um, about it and actually 
aren't very happy when I go in and trim things at <laughs> some points to uh, uh, help keep the height down. Um, so we did make um, another site in Menominee Park uh, where we planted some of the taller plants. Um, initially, that was our trying to relocate them. However, um, the tall plants came back <laughs> in Miller's Bay. So we found that wasn't really an effective way of doing that, but at least we were able to plant some really good plants in here. We also planted some original seeds and things in there that weren't from the other site. So we actually see a cool different diversity um, at the pump house site. Uh, I call it the pump house site because it's actually located between uh, the pump house, um, Menominee Park by the softball diamond, um, and the lake there. And this is a picture of us working with United Way on one of their volunteering days when they came out to help us. And it was freezing, and these people still came and did an amazing job of helping us clean up the start of the season. There have been different times where um, <laughs> things have gone accidentally mowed over, um, which caused actually some problems with some uh, weeds that wanted to go in there. They really work well in disturbed sites. Um, so Queen Anne's lace was um, an invasive species that we really had to take care of, um, which since we did that in 2018, well, I have not seen that as badly, which is awesome. Um, we also installed the bird box in spring, which I'll get to, um, of 2021. So we have one at the pump house and two in the Miller's Bay site by Ames Point. We also collaborated with UW Oshkosh. I won't spend much time on this because it's not um, in Menominee Park, but um, it was one we worked with UW Oshkosh, Winnebago County Land and Water um, to install a low growth site um, along the river there, which was really cool just to give us an idea of, you know, if these um, particular species are planted, what does that look like? Um, and just to be kind of a cool pilot site for um, the city to see different plants and things if they'd like to. So that's actually by the Eric Lab at UW Oshkosh, if you ever want to walk by there. Um, the only thing is it's a little different than the site at Lake Winnebago because the conditions are different, right? It's not along the lake. It has more trees and cover, whereas at um, on Lake Winnebago, we don't have as many trees by the shore. Um, they don't get as much shade, so they don't have to, they have to compete more here, so they don't grow as tall either. Um, whereas at the Miller's Bay site and Pump House site, they get all the sun and water that they want, so they like to grow. Well, that was cool. Um, we also worked with the Oshkosh Housing Authority to plant some plants on Nicolay behind one of their apartment properties, which was really cool. High school students often help us with that site from uh, north. And then in spring 2021, um, we were able to install some bird boxes. Um, and like I said, we have one at the pump house and two at Miller's Bay. Um, we had a total of about uh, eight tree swallows that were fledged from those boxes, which is awesome. Um, at least I have two of them. One of them we had a hard time with house sparrows that wanted to nest there, um, which are birds that are not native and they outcompete. Um, good songbirds that we want to promote. Um, so we're working on that. Uh, but we did do some research throughout the whole season and monitor, monitored them every week um, and submitted our data to the Bluebird Restoration Association of Wisconsin, who's been a great partner with this and that actually they donated the um, bird boxes and poles and helped us install. Um, <laughs> I love this picture because this is one of the college students who had so much fun spreading the seeds of the uh, milkweed there and she actually made up a, a song that she was doing <laughs> along with it. I wish I could have the audio of that, but um, in any case, that was the past 10 years. So um, let's talk about some changes that um, new things that we're hoping for this year. Um, we're trying to always improve and show growth and show um, intention with the sites. So this year, we're actually partnering with a class pretty closely. Um, it's called Geography 250. The professor is uh, Jana Gediman. 
and there are four different groups that are helping us. One that is helping with the um, bird boxes. So they're researching how to discourage house sparrows, how to encourage bluebirds at the site. Um, we're working with Ripon College, um, and uh, they're also working with oh, another partner, oh, the Bluebird Restoration Association of Wisconsin. Um, they're working together to help um, with this skylight project. Basically, um, it's just like a clear window that's put into the top of the house to see if that discourages house sparrows from nesting there and to see if other good species would go in that. Um, and so that um, is actually planted. Um, I thought it was going to be um, the perfect thing because we have two boxes at Miller's Bay and I knew we needed one with the skylight and one without. However, um, the research group um, to do this wants it to be three feet apart. So having one that has a window um, that's three feet away from one that does not. Um, and that would be the, the box that you would need to have there was the one with the house sparrows in it last year. So house sparrows nested there last year. What happens if there's a skylight one there? And what happens if there's also um, one that doesn't have a skylight that's just three feet away from it? So that's one of the things that I'm hoping to do shortly here. As soon as the ground thaws and we have enough um, ground to be able to put that in um, soft ground so it's not as hard. Um, so uh, there's also um, a marketing and media group and that's just mostly helping with um, our organization. So um, we're looking to see um, if it makes sense to change our name, to be out on social media more, how do we get more volunteers, that kind of thing. So mostly just helping out with the organization itself. <coughs> um, there is a, um, I put site planning group, but that's uh, mostly just landscaping where they're gonna help us with the far eastern side of the Miller's um, Bay site has a lot of tall species, a lot of coriaceous that really took control. Um, so we really want to replant that area. So we're asking them to kind of work with the other groups, see what um, plants attract the insects that bluebirds eat and things like that. Um, and I did give them the specification it would be low growing plants. So um, they are looking into that for us so that we might be able to install something this season. Um, that would look a little bit nicer and help with what we're trying to do. Um, and another group to help us with education research, coming up with um, pamphlets, brochures, um, activities for school children who might be visiting our tables um, where we're at and things and kind of learning about our organization. Um, so they're gonna actually have field days with us, a lot of Fridays, I don't know if you saw our schedule, um, but there are work days starting April 1st and going through the end of, almost the end of the semester because they have to have finals and their final projects and things, but um, where they're gonna come out and volunteer and do things. So um, I'm hoping to utilize them to put in our wood chip path and things like that too. So they want to get their hands dirty. The whole point of this class is um, part of the USP project at UWO um, where the, um, Gen Ed courses, they're sometimes known as, were replaced with um, classes that had more to do with civic engagement and outreach and different things like that. So um, UW Oshkosh has been partnering with the Sustainability Advisory Board um, and now this group um, to help us with different things. And they are just trying to get the students um, experience working with volunteer groups in the city and different things. So this is just the perfect, um, kind of project for that. Um, so I had to put a plug in there. So <laughs> this is my son, who sometimes comes out and helps me if I can convince him that the bugs are not going to hurt him. Um, so just some quick things that people can do to um, help with our water quality and with you know, planting, stop using fertilizer, pesticides, and herbicides, because those do wash into our water, and Lake Winnebago is our drinking water. Um, diverting stormwater to decrease runoff, so the more um, that stormwater can filter out instead of washing right into our water systems, the better quality it is. 
uh, learn a little bit more about native um, and invasive non-native plants. Um, hopefully once we have brochures, that'll help a little bit with that. Um, come out and visit our sites. They're really neat to see once they're growing. Um, you can also plant um, your own native plants at home. And again, we're hoping to come up with more literature to be able to help people do that on their own as well. Um, and you can always um, contact me and volunteer, um, work with a local group um, and see if they want to come out and adopt a cleanup day with us. Um, so always lots of fun. We get different groups every year. And um, also let us know what you think. If you have any ideas, cool things that you'd like to see, things that you don't think are working so well, let us know. Um, we love to try to partner and help people um, create a shared vision for what this can be and look like. And that's it. And those links, <laughs> the, uh, the Volunteer Oshkosh is a really cool thing. That's United Way's link for um, local nonprofits to list their um, volunteer things. But with Facebook, um, that will probably change. Um, and this is our blog of just the first five years, but um, that kind of got outdated. Um, so these are just our plans for um, this year because I'm just really interested to see what the students propose in this class. I didn't develop the second and third year, but we're basically a little bit at a time um, and just trying to improve things as much as we can every season. So um, I'd like to answer any questions or concerns about that as well. Any yes. wood duck houses? Or um, any plans for wood duck houses? Uh, we don't have any plans right now for other bird houses. Um, we also want to be cognizant of the fact that sometimes birds don't nest near each other and, you know, um, different things like that. So that's definitely something we might be able to consider and look into. Um, we have had ducks nest in the site before multiple times. So they, they do make um, <laughs> that their home at times. Anyway. Ray, I think you had a question. I just wanted to let the board know that, um, you know, we've been very fortunate to work with Michelle. She's been very responsive. If we get any concerns, she is able to help deal with those. Um, and I would agree with her that the number of complaints or concerns that we've gotten over the years, the past couple of years, has um, really gone down significantly. Um, and I'd offer up, <clears throat> Michelle, that the Senior Center is part of our department as well. And maybe, you know, somebody presenting some of these things at the Senior Center might be an option for some education as well. So. That sounds that really cool. Yeah, I would love that. We've presented um, with other groups. I know we presented to the Oshkosh Garden Club and to different churches and everything. So I always love coming and talking about this because I'm very passionate about it. It's, you know, I don't, <laughs> I don't get paid. This is all volunteer stuff. All we're all donation based um, and all volunteer time. Nobody gets paid for it. So um, it's just something I really care about. I think it's awesome that you're doing this. Thank you. And yeah, it's totally. the results are great when we when I use the park, it's just awesome. So thanks for what you do. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yeah, and I do work with um, the city staff over the whole season too. Usually I'll email and be like, Oh hey, just so you know we were out there this past weekend. They of course have our schedule ahead of time, but you know, I just kinda of provide updates and things that are going on, what we're seeing out there or not. So um, yeah, we do have that contact throughout the season. Any other comments or questions for Michelle? Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you so much for your time and having me. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, so we need to vote on extending the maintenance agreement for three years. We need a motion first. We need a motion first. Yes, we do. <laughs> All motion. All second. Tony, was that you that caught motion? Mm -hmm. yeah. You keep I'm on fire today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lester, you got to speak up fast. I know. I did this. <laughs> I got it out already. All right. Motion to approve the three-year plan. Bartelt. Aye. Davis. Aye. Dearth. Aye. Budak. Aye. Metz. Aye. Millette. Aye. Challenger. Aye. All right. Motion passed. Eight. No. Seven to zero. Great. All right, moving on to 
the concession stand agreement for William G. Spanbauer Field with the city and the Eagles. Okay. Um, in your packet, you received a copy of the um, most recent concession agreement for William Spanbauer Field with the um, Fraternal Order of, Order of Eagles. Uh, the Eagles Club has been operating the concessions there for many, many years. Um, I did not look how, how far back they go, but it's been a long time. Um, they use it as a fundraiser for supporting some of their youth programs. So <clears throat> we've been in discussions with them and uh, we're proposing and uh, if the board agrees, we'd have to take a, a recommendation to the council. Um, the, the one revision that I would like to, to point out is um, in the payment section, in the past, there was a clause where payment to the city was $1,000 or 10% of gross revenues, whichever was greater. What we've seen, obviously, since COVID is um, a reduction in the use of ball fields by um, most of the youth programs. We're starting to see that come back. I think from what we're seeing on field reservations, we're going to be coming back pretty strong this year. Uh, but the Eagles asked us if we could um, try something different with them this year um, so that they don't have a, a set payment uh, that may not reach $1,000 if they don't have the participants there. So we're suggesting that um, for this year that we charge a flat 50% of gross revenues uh, to be fair for them this year and see how things go through the year. So that is our recommendation. That's just for one year? Yes, we would do one year and I think uh, it's good for both of us. They suggested one year as well. Um, Again, just getting our, everybody's feet back on the ground to see sure. what operations might look like. So, I'd make a motion to approve. Okay. All right. Um, the motion to approve the agreement with the Eagles Club. Bartelt? Aye. Davis? Aye. Dearth? Aye. Hudak? Aye. Metz? Aye. Millette? Aye. And Schellinger? Aye. Motion passed 7 to 0. Thank you. All right, now on to staff reports. Great, a couple items. Um, update on our Parks Administration Operations Building. We opened bids for that project late thurs last Thursday afternoon. Um, as we expected, the bids came in over budget. Um, what we're doing some right now is some value engineering with our consultant and uh, the lowest bidder to see if there's some cost <coughs> savings that we might be able to identify. Um, and. Fortunately or unfortunately, the city manager and finance director are both on vacation this week. So uh, when they return, we'll have some discussions um, about some potential potential funding sources and um, how we can keep that project moving because obviously it's needed and um, you know, we need to try to work on ways to, to find some potential funding. So I'll keep you posted on that. Um, uh, just a reminder for the Lakeshore Park Four Seasons building, groundbreaking, you should have received an email invite from us that's march 28th at um, 4 p.m at the end of panoqua street um, we'll just have a little ceremony of groundbreaking um, we'll have the mayor there to make a few comments the city manager and uh, representatives from both cardinal construction who's the contractor and smith group who has been working with us since the the park master plan so mark your calendar and attend if you can um, and then my last item is to Congratulate Chad and, and let the board know that Chad was honored by our Wisconsin Park and Rec Association. Um, he received the Professional Award of Merit at our annual conference back in February. Um, the Professional Award of Merit is the highest honor um, presented to one of our professionals in the state each year. Um, and it's voted on and supported by colleagues. So I think um, that speaks highly for uh, not only Chad's involvement with WPRA, which he was president in 2019, mm -hmm. So he was president of our association in 2019. Um, he's currently on the, um, the public policy advisory um, committee. Um, so he continues to stay involved with the state association and it was a, a great banquet in recognition for him. So I just want to make sure that the board's aware of that too. Thank you very much. All right. Well, that's an introduction for your staff report. <laughs> um, I guess a few things. I'm just uh, back to the award. It's a very humbling experience. I got to recognize at council the other night, too. But I think more importantly, when I think about all the people you get to work with in this profession, it's no one person that does all the work. It comes collectively with so many people, and it's an honor to work with 
this community and all the other people involved with us uh, to make sure that we can uh, sustain what we're doing and improve what we're doing uh, for this community. So hopefully we can all keep up the good work and keep moving forward in a positive direction. But I do thank you for the acknowledgement for that award. It means a lot to me. Thank you. Um, in regards to some of the things going on right now, I, uh, now that the snow is uh, letting up and uh, hopefully ground conditions get to bed, get, get going here, um, two items. We've been spending a lot of time in the parks right now assisting the forestry landscape ops in some ash tree removals uh, in different areas. We don't want to tear up groundwork, so we might be at the end here for a little bit till things firm up again. So it's been a great winter on those things with the low parts of snow uh, from there. But um, the Parks Gazebo down at Riverside Park, you'll probably notice that from this past fall, uh, we started construction down there, but we did receive the, the kit and gonna be hopefully putting that up within the next two weeks. But we got everything restored and ready for the end of May uh, for when uh, weddings start taking place down around the park uh, in Riverside. So hopefully that'll take place here now. Uh, and then also, Stacy can attest to this because she's gone through a lot with the, our bench, memorial bench orders for over the past year and a half. And I think we finally had our first shipment come in two weeks ago that was well over a year out. Uh, so patrons that have donated to this program will start seeing these. We should hopefully see a series of more of shipments coming in in the next couple months. Uh, we have all the concrete work and done and all the plaques in place, just waiting for the benches to get them out there. So uh, we appreciate the public's uh, donations for that service, but also the patience for us to get them out uh, in some of our sites. So we are looking forward to those getting in place. But, uh, Hopefully I'll have more for you next month as we get into spring here. So thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, other business, Ray. <laughs> I had one item that I forgot under my report, so I'll do it here. Um, the Chief Oshkosh sign project, um, we have chosen a vendor for those signs. It, take, it took us a little longer because we were waiting for um, the quotes to come back. We had to get at least three quotes. Um, and one of the firms, um, we had to do a little prying to get um, the information and work with them. So we are, um, we did place the order recently. Um, we are just having some final communication with the sign company um, on the order, but um, it is moving forward with a vendor that we've chosen, so. Thank you. All right, any other business? All right, I make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. <laughs> I won't make one <laughs> All in favor of adjourning? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Huh? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.